MK and I am back with another scrap lift and today I am scrap lifting one of my BFFs, Janet Fritz. I absolutely loved how this layout turned out. I love all of the greenery that is in here, probably because I like green, but today is also Wood Grain Wednesday and this video is going to be just a hair late and I apologize about that, but it wasn't until I started looking at the sketch a little bit more when I realized uh, she wrote it back to cut file and I'm doing it the hard way, <laughs> but that's okay. Um, I am still going to tackle this sketch because I uh, am committed to. Yep. That's why. So I'm going through all of my cool little things. I have some wood pieces that are uh, hexagons and then I've sprayed these P13s that um, these little P13 wooden pieces. Um, I sprayed them with green and then I sprinkled them with Heidi Swap so that way they had a little bit of shine to them. I also um, have been wanting to use these on about three layouts now, but I'm finally getting to use them. Yay. Um, also, I took a cut file that was a tree ring on another layout, and before I changed its color, I decided that I was going to put it on its carrying sheet, the one that it came with in the packaging, and kind of sort of just squirt it a little bit with the spray, trying to create a background. But, you know, I thought I'd cut up the background and use it on this layout. So this one is going to be wood on wood on wood, and it's going to just be so much fun. I promise. <laughs> First, I didn't have a clue what I was going to do, except for the fact that I knew I wanted the same background that Janet used. So um, lately, I have been using my distressing tool quite a bit. Um, I love the dimension that it adds without actually adding a whole lot of thickness, if that makes any sense. Um, I'm also taking this uh, six by six and trimming around all of the wooden tree rings. Um, the only thing that I trimmed out was basically if it wasn't a full ring, it didn't get to stay. Sorry. So I almost started without you guys. I apologize. But what I'm doing is I'm trying to get the exact same design as what Janet is using. And I've laid down those tree rings a little bit. Um, I, they're just laying there. That I, I don't have them glued. I don't have them anything. I just kind of sort of thought that I would take a look and see if I even liked them. Well, one of the things that my brain did not comprehend, let's just, let's just say that, was the fact that none of my so-called logs are the same thickness. Um, yeah, I didn't even bother cutting them the same thickness. I basically used whatever line was on the pattern and that is what I was throwing in because I didn't want logs to be the same. That just wasn't me. So I do have a little bit of, um, you know, struggle here and there trying to get everything to work, um, especially like right in here. I needed a wider log because I didn't realize that it's the, it's the pieces that make the pattern. Yeah, go figure, huh? So <laughs> I am going to record this just a little bit so you guys can see it. And um, I for basically the entire portion of, of this part here, I, I don't know how to say it, the tree rings that I cut out that are like sprayed from the, the faux stencil, yep, let's call it that, um, they stay right where they're at. I don't move them at all. But I kind of wanted to show you guys how I attempted to make the, you know, the design that is on Janet's, um, Janet's layout. I didn't need a cut file. I was able to make the design as is. In fact, I had enough little uh, <laughs> logs. I had enough of those to where I could have probably actually, um, what is the word? <sighs> what is that word? I could have... Oh, filled in the whole paper if I wanted to. Um, but for some reason, I thought that since my pictures were going to cover up the center, then I wasn't going to do the centers. I mean, that's just silly. <laughs> At least in my brain, it is. All right. So let's fast forward just a little bit more. And I am finished. Oh, my goodness. Here we are. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, you guys, but that was massively boring. You guys did not want to watch that, seriously. So I'm actually, 
taking five seconds and talking to my son. I apologize about that. Um, but I'm not liking it. See how the tree rings kind of got lost and basically all they did was fill in the gap. Uh, one of the things that I also noticed was when I lay down my photos, I can see that solid line of where the tree ring was. So first thing I'm trying to do is decide how I want my pattern to go because there was a specific tree ring that I wanted to use to put my title on. But of course, you know, by the time that I got that far, I totally forgot about it. So <laughs> yeah, so um, we're not going to talk about that no more. <laughs> I, I find it kind of funny because I have something in my brain, but then by the time that I get to it, uh, the layout's already gone way past what I was even envisioning. So yeah. Anywho, here is that um, little six by six paper that I cut apart. And then I decided that I wanted it to be at the top of my photos and at the bottom of my photos. So I'm going to tuck in the bottom portion, which actually fits in beautifully, to be honest, the way that I have my photos set as of now. <laughs> and of course, I can't forget that teeny tiny little tree ring. No trees left behind on this page. <laughs> so anyways, um, I do like how it is, but I do have to say that I stepped away from it because I don't like it. I am not very happy and where I wanted to put my title is not going where I wanted it, if that makes sense. The photos are a little bit too left-handed and I definitely am covering up all the tree ring. I mean, you can't, the large tree rings, you just, you couldn't even tell that they were under there. So of course, like I said, I stepped away and now I am coming back and tearing apart my layout. Yes, I am. But don't worry, I do put it back together and I will be actually putting it, um, I'll be putting the pieces back on. Now, I don't know what brand of cardstock this is, but it's very fibrous. Um, when you get fibrous, uh, kind of my, more like construction paper cardstock, when you peel up your double-sided tape, uh, not tear and tape, but the tape like in your ATG or in a dispenser of some sort, it will rip your paper um a little bit more than you intended to. Now, normally with my ATG gun, all I have to do is twist it a little bit and the tape gives before the paper does in the paper that I use. Like I said, this one came in my, well, I did, I guess I didn't tell you guys, this one came in my Not Just For Boys Kit Club kit, uh, one of them. And like I said, I don't know what brand it is, but it was very fibrous and so it tore um, it, it, it just ripped like construction paper does. And I don't really like that. I don't like the little, the little hairs that you get from, um, you know, not being able to lift up something cleanly. Anyways, uh, get off that pedestal. <laughs> I'm just, I just love my cardstock that I use. And, um, even though it is a little bit more expensive than the open car open stock cardstock at big box stores, I don't have that luxury. And so I order all my cardstock online, but it's also where you can order it in bulk. Um, just to let you know while I'm playing with a bunch of tree rings, um, I order my cardstock in bulk from close to my heart. So you can order a 12 pack or a 24 pack. And like, if you only want six sheets, you can order six of one color, two of another, two of another, but the minimum is two of one color. And I think that's pretty nice, especially when um, you know, you, you like cardstock, but you don't need cardstock, if that makes sense, or you like cardstock, but you don't have room for a big bundle of cardstock. So I think it works out really well. Um, I especially love their, their mix and match, um, packets that you can pre, that you can order, uh, instead of uh, you only get 24 sheets of one color. I, I really do like the mix and match. Anyways, what am I doing? Well, I love having the tree rings up front and forward just a little bit more. But as you can see, I have that line. I don't have a full tree ring. I never had a full tree ring because when I sprayed the cut file, it was more meant for a background. So I like my backgrounds to fall off the page and make it look like they came into the page rather than they're central on the page. So I'm trying to figure out how on earth can I get you know, can I get the effect that I am looking for? Basically, 
All I'm asking for is I want tree rings. I want large tree rings and small tree rings and in between tree rings. I mean, can I please get a tree ring? Please. <laughs> so I'm now debating that I like the smaller edge on these two tree rings more than I like the larger edge. So I eventually come to the conclusion that I'm going to have to cut them apart. Yep, because I like those two tree rings down at the bottom, but I can't get this cluster of tree rings to cover up the gap. I have a gap and I'm being stubborn and I don't want to put in any more of my so-called logs. Nope, I don't. So how do I fill in the gap? I cut the tree rings apart. Yep, that's what I do. <laughs> I know, it's like shocker, right? <laughs> I know, you guys. This has just been one of those things where it's left and right and right and left. So because I cut apart all three of them and all three of my tree rings were overlapping, the one that I just cut apart kind of has a weird edge to it. And so I need to figure out how to get that weird edge to not be so out in the obvious. Um, so adding my cluster of tree rings helps a little bit, just a little bit, but it does help. I'm not going to lie. And so I'm thinking that now that they are kind of standalone and part of the embellishing, um, had a little leftover double-sided tape, by the way, sorry about that. I decided that I'm going to ink the edges then that will help them give dimension and pop off the page. Now I'm just using whatever ink I had left over on my sponge. I have no idea what color it was or, um, you know, what, I have no idea. I don't even know if it's the same, like matchy matchy. I also decided to cut the tree ring a little bit more just to get rid of that weird edge. It definitely looked like there was a tree right there, right? It looked like it grew into another tree and yeah, I needed to get rid of it. So I just kind of made it a little bit smaller and now I really like it. I am very, very happy with the way that it is looking. And of course, when I lay things down like this, I don't want them to shift. So I am going to flip my photos over, put some glue on them and then stick the bottom layers to that. So then that way I have something, um, holding everything together. Does that make sense? So I'm basically going to use the photos as a pickup tool. Yep, that's what I'm going to do. And hopefully they do actually, <laughs> it does work, who knows. <laughs> so, you know, I, half the time it's a guessing game. I have no idea if what I'm going to do will work and half the time it's like, oh yeah, for sure. I know that this is good to go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Here's one of those pieces where I was talking about the whole fiber and went on that soapbox, but yeah, it's, it's in the paper, you guys, and it's all who makes the paper. I swear it's, it has to be. Um, there are some brands of paper that I absolutely positively will not use like whatsoever because I just don't like them. Um, there's only one specific brand that I will use in my Cricut and I, I don't know, um, for sure. I, I'm not an expert, um, especially in like what I'm about ready to say, but I don't know if it has to do with the longevity of my mats and blades based on the paper that is being used, but I would like to think it is because I've only changed my blade in my original Explorer once. I know everybody's jaw just dropped. I get it, but truly and honestly, I do have the original Explorer, the one that takes the little Wi-Fi card in order to you know, communicate with my phone. I think it's Bluetooth, not Wi-Fi. Anyways, it didn't come with the computer chip to do it um, without a cable. And so I had to buy a card. And um, anyways, that was long after or way before the air was made. And yeah, I've only had to change the blade once from this original blade. So in case you guys were curious, yep. And I do change or I do clean my photo mats depend or not my photo mats, but my cricket mats. I know. How did we get talking on a cricket? I don't know. I didn't use a cricket in this one layout one bit, not one bit, but, um, I do know that, um, I clean my photo mats about every six months, but they are highly, highly used seriously over overworked. They've paid for themselves time and time again. Anyways. Um, so these P13 embellishments, a, they're uber thin, very delicate, and 
did I mention thin? Yes. B, they are all held together by little strips of the same material, wood or balsa wood or something like that. Um, And so you have to cut them apart. Well, in cutting them apart, I broke some and that's okay. (laughs) You know, they're going to get tucked under anyways and all throughout the wood. I like this little pop of green because it also kind of, it kind of resembles where my kids were, you know, air quoting, stacking wood. <laughs> so um, I also I also include their ages because um, ever since my kids were little, they've always, if we're outside, they're outside. If we are um, doing something in the kitchen, they're in the kitchen. Um, our, our kids have always been with us no matter what. So my daughter is three, my youngest, and um, my middle son is six. I don't know where my youngest son or my, um, I don't know where my youngest son is, but I do know where my two older children are uh, for this photo. However, um, three and six, and we were cutting up uh, wood for our fireplace in um, our old house, and they wanted to help stack the wood. And so basically, dad would hand them pieces that they could handle, you know, <laughs> very tiny pieces. Um, (laughs) And, uh, you know, they were just throwing them in a pile. And that was just adorable. Um, (laughs) And so yeah, it was it was more work to try and make it uniform than it was to, um, you know, to just throw it in a pile. Yep. And we will collect it when we collect it. And when it's in the house, we'll make it a little bit more uniform. But this was just so much fun. Um, And they've been helping us do this well, like, like I said, um, my little one, she's only three and, um, we collected our firewood. We go out and cut our own firewood and we make it a whole camping trip and it's so much fun, you guys. Um, and then we don't have a fireplace anymore. Um, not a wood one and, but we still go and get firewood for those that need it. So, uh, yeah, it's basically one of those things that if, you know, we understand how busy other people are and we understand how, um, possibly they aren't able to go or don't have the means to go get firewood, but yet they still need to keep warm during the winters, just like we do. So we do, we go out and we collect firewood and we do a whole truckload, which we don't have a full bed, um, you know, a full size truck bed. And so it's whatever fits in our bed. We bring it home, we make it to where it can fit in a, in a fireplace. And then, um, we call the church and find out which, you know, who has fireplaces and we start calling around and seeing who needs, who needs wood. So anyways, um, that is what we do. And yeah, and the kids have loved helping. Um, I think their favorite part though, is actually going out into the woods and getting the firewood than it is, um, you know, finishing it out at home, stacking it. So, (laughs) um, yeah, so we've never actually really stacked firewood. So that, that's what leads me to my title. That's kind of like, you know, what's stacking wood. (laughs) So anyways, I'm just about done. I am going to add all of my, um, little pieces. I believe this is a pink fresh alphabet that I have. It's a wood grain with kind of a peach foam behind it, which is one of my favorite combinations, you guys. I mean, wood grain and peach, that is just awesome. If only I could have gotten my hands on a couple more of those. So I'm going to use the um, these hexagons as basically enamel dots. And that is how I'm going to finish off this layout is by sprinkling-ish these little pieces all over the place. Now I apologize that it is pushed up just a little bit more. It looks like my camera's askew as well. And I just noticed that, but that's okay. Um, obviously, if it wasn't bothering me... <laughs> I would have never noticed, Um, except for the fact that I'm a little off camera. And then when I look that I'm off camera, I look to see maybe why. So I'm not sure. But yeah, I, oh, there it goes. I just noticed. Yay. Good girl. Anyways. (laughs) So this is my favorite part. I absolutely love adding on the little bits. I like tucking them behind the tree logs and giving those dimension as well. I love, um, kind of like um, scattering them in between all the greenery. Now, I did put all of my greenery flush down on the paper because they were so delicate and so thin. So I won't be tucking anything underneath those. 
Um, but I, and I don't actually, uh, what's the word? I don't actually put anything on top of them either. So I'm basically just filling in where I felt like needed something else, if that makes sense. So, and I'm going to start with these hexagons. Yes, I love the fact that these hexagons, I got the inners and the outers. So I have these frames as well as the insides of the frames. So then I have lots and lots of different sizes to work with. I have noticed um, a, a lot more lately that I, I enjoy having various sizes rather than just one or two. It's one of those things where I like having those differences. Once I'm done placing all of these hexagons down, now I am basically trying to stick to the rules of three. Even though I have four clusters-ish of uh, hexagons, I do consider the hexagons above the bottom title and to the left of the bottom title. I believe in my brain, I'm considering that as one huge cluster. And then the one off all the way on the right is another cluster and the one at the top is another cluster. So I decided that I was going to pull out these um, pre, like pre, oh, I have a word for them. <laughs> pre -adhered, adhered, they've got a sticky dot on them. Yep, that's what they are. And they're little sequins. Um, this is an old pack by Close to My Heart. Uh, wow, way back in the day. I'm going to have to say like 12 or 13, 20, 2012 or 2013. Anyways, um, I bought a bunch of them because I loved the colors in them. And so yeah, I added some sequins all over the place just to kind of, uh, you know, give it that little bit more of a sprinkle. And here it is. That is the rest of my layout. I want to thank Janet Fritz for allowing me to scrap lift her today. Actually, she didn't give me permission. Uh, I just did it because I wanted to. And then also, um, be sure to check out everyone else that is playing along today, if you haven't already. And I will check you all tomorrow. Bye.